I'm Will Ripley in Atlanta, and this is CNN Newsroom. We continue to follow breaking news at this hour. Riot police in Hong Kong are trying to break up crowds of protesters, thousands of people out in the streets. The demonstrations are against a controversial and currently suspended extradition bill. And this is the seventh consecutive week of large-scale protests in Hong Kong. But this time was different. A CNN team on the ground says this week's clashes between police and protesters took a dangerous turn. And our Matt Rivers was live on the air when he saw police using force. Take a look. There, and he is aiming. There are rubber, either rubber bullets or beanbags being fired. I did just witness that on air here. That is a very extreme tactic that you don't usually see in Hong Kong. The police were criticized a lot. You can see the officer right in the middle of the crowd there. And there's other media that's going to be in the way, Will, unfortunately. But the fact that there is an officer surrounded by the press willing to shoot what I believe was a rubber bullet or a beanbag at this point, I can't tell for certain. But there was certainly a projectile just fired. Tear gas is one thing, but that is an escalation in tactics, I think. That was CNN's Matt Rivers on the air just over two hours ago, and now Matt joins us live from Hong Kong, where things seem to have quieted down. Matt, first of all, any clarity about what police actually fired at those protesters? We haven't had an exact uh, uh, statement or anything like that from, from police yet, Will. We do believe uh, there were certainly projectiles fired. I can tell you that. We do believe uh, that rubber bullets were used. We also believe that there could be uh, beanbags that were used. And like I said uh, earlier, that that's an escalation. We haven't really seen very much of that during these seven weeks of protest. They had used them a bit earlier, several weeks ago. Uh, but tonight, Will, was certainly the most violent, I think it's safe to say, of the seven weeks. Not only the way we saw protesters respond to police, but how police responded to them. Uh, there was a lot of tear gas fired, uh, a, a very large amount of tear gas fired. There were at least a half dozen rounds uh, of, of rubber bullets or some other less lethal projectile. Uh, and so it was a very intense scene for the better part uh, of an hour. Now, let's show you what it looks like now. If you zoom in down there, there's hardly any protesters left, if any. I, uh, the vast majority of people you see down there are actually media members uh, and also social workers here uh, in Hong Kong. And if we come back over this way, you, know, you can see the police here. Um, you know, and I'll step out of the way. Uh, you know, they're relaxed now, Will. Uh, they have calmed down for the night. Uh, I think they're just waiting for the remaining people here to leave, and then they're going to pack up in buses uh, and go home. But, Will, you, you and I were both there at the moment. You saw how intense it was, and it just goes to show you that these kind of protests here in Hong Kong, they have the potential to be violent, and the momentum of protests, uh, despite the violence that we've seen, you know, we saw 400,000 people in the streets peacefully today. These protests are going to continue here in Hong Kong. And, of course, Matt, police always give a lower estimate. They say it's closer to 138,000. But nonetheless, large crowds and, as you mentioned, a, an extraordinary escalation in terms of the violence. How significant is this night for Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement? Is this a turning point and in what direction would it be turning? Yeah, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how people react to this. I mean, we have seen violence before. Tonight certainly was the most intense, and I think it was striking that you saw protesters on several occasions rush at the police uh, in a way on a scale that we haven't really seen in the last seven weeks or so. And what has really kind of marked these protests, Will, over the past two months or so is how a, a really cross-section of Hong Kong society has bought in. The fact that hundreds of thousands of people, millions during some of these marches, have turned out, you know, that, that those are not just 20-year-old liberal students who would make up the majority of the people that we saw engaged in violence tonight. That's working-class families. That's elderly. We've seen a lot of children, parents bringing their kids out to these protests. That's really been a hallmark of these protests. As this violence continues, and if it continues from this point, if this becomes more, uh, 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 you know, the norm. Last weekend, there wasn't a lot of violence. Tonight, it got very violent. Is it violent again? Again next weekend and how does that have an impact on the way not only the people here in Hong Kong who are participating in the peaceful marches does that uh, dampen their their want to come out and join but also what does it do to the international image uh, of what's going on here in Hong Kong how does the international community respond and how does that affect their support we're not sure about that yet will but I think next weekend's marches that are planned are going to be key what follows up this very violent evening here in Hong Kong
And next weekend, Matt, would be the eighth consecutive week. And just when we thought this summer of unrest was winding down, it revved up again in a big way. CNN's Matt Rivers live in Hong Kong. Thank you.